What's the word, y'all? Who are the most underrated players in the NBA? I get you a second to give your answer in the comment section, but that's what we talking about today. Because I get asked this question so many times. When you meet somebody for the first time and you tell them what you do for a living and I tell them this, uh, they ask, like, oh, who's going to win the championship this year? That's the first question. And the second question is who is underrated? It's not who's the MVP, who's the best player in the league. For some reason, everybody wants to know who's underrated. And boy, I, I just don't never, I never really know how to tackle that question because I think it's a loaded question. Listen, my job is to talk hoops, so I'm always overthinking NBA questions. I could easily say uh, Jaden McDaniels and just leave it at that. I always overthink these things, so uh, I'm going to get some help after I tell you. These hats, these new Enjoy Basketball hats are on sale right now. The link is in the description. It is very limited as all Enjoy Basketball drops are, so you do not want to miss out. It is for the basketball enthusiasts Enjoy. I've been rocking this one in the black one in the videos for a long time now. A lot of y'all been asking when the drop is. The drop is right now, so hit the link in the description before it sells out. So, uh, The Athletic uh, asked 100 NBA players, which is about a third of active NBA players, to answer a bunch of questions, and one of the questions was this one. Who is underrated? It's always interesting to see how many people voted considering how many uh, tallies went out, right? Who was the MVP? 100 people uh, ended up answering. Best defender, you get 98 people answering. Uh, 104 on who they would start their, their franchise with from scratch. Who's overrated? And half of those people said, no, 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 no. You're not about to get an answer out of me. Even, even though this is anonymous, you're not going to get an answer out of me. Um, a lot of those people said Trey Young, which is a conversation for another day, I guess. But then you get to underrated, and majority of the people dig it. They vote in, and the bulk of, like, an individual player is Drew Holiday. You listen to any player podcast there is. When this question is asked, their answer is Drew Holiday. And for good reason. Drew Holiday is one of the best perimeter players, uh, perimeter defenders in all of basketball. And the offensive game may not match that, but it is pretty close. And you can see why. I mean, he made the All-Star game this year. But this was this season, right? This is this year. You also get people like uh, Shea Gibbs Alexander, who made his first All-NBA team, and Kill Bridges, who was really good second half of the season. These are oh, also like Damian Lillard, even though he's one of the best players in the league. They saying, uh-uh, y'all still not giving him enough respect. And I like that. This is from 2023. The same exact poll went out in 2019 and people still said Drew Holiday was the most overrated. So I am saying right now, <laughs> Drew Holiday cannot be the most underrated for four years in a row because that just means he's regularly rated. You know what I'm saying? If everybody recognizes how good he is, he's not underrated yes because you can tackle it in a couple different ways right when you think about underrated you could say hey majority of the, the general public don't really understand how good this player really is that's a one way to tackle it and the second way is hey i know y'all watching and i know you see him doing his thing but you not getting a full grasp but if it's been four years and people are still saying true it's got to be a new answer somewhere in there eventually right like bro he's the best defender and he's the most underrated like that's insane. Anyway, all of this stems from this one Reddit post um, from rpars18, and he asks who's the most underrated player of ball. He said he kind of want to say Trey Young, but I'm interested to see what others consider underrated. And it's funny because the athletic poll had the players think that Trey Young is overrated. This guy's thinking that Trey Young is underrated. And I, I kind of understand what he's coming from. It gets to the point where you become so considered overrated that you eventually becomes you become underrated like Trey Young has put up some ridiculous stats and not even really been been in, he wasn't even really in conversations for an all-star game last season I was there at that time I made a ballot Trey Young did not even cross the well he crossed the mind but he didn't make the official ballot even though he was averaging what 25 and 10 I understand his officially tanked last season compared to the others but still a lot of people believe that Trey Young is not like that when in reality well, he, he probably is, but I mean, only time will tell. Number one upvoted thing is Wendell Carter. Uh, pretty much a jack of all trades type of player. And this is something I said recently, best contract in the league. So it's funny to see other people agreeing because it's a four year, <laughs> four year, $50 million feels like pennies, pennies, the way the NBA money is right now. But I understand this. I completely understand this. I've said this for some time. I mean, fr from the time he was in Chicago, I told the world like, Wendell Carter is actually nice. You might look at his box score and say, oh, 13 and eight. That ain't really... Now, we yawn at those kind of numbers, but he does a little bit of everything. And I think the Orlando Magic have a decent amount of players that kind of could be in the underrated tier because they do a little bit of everything. The real question with Wendell Carter is, will he become excellent at one of those things that he can really attach himself to? Because if he becomes an excellent rebounder or an excellent shot blocker or excellent IQ or excellent mid-range jump shooter, whatever it may be, 
if he can take one skill and become excellent with it with everything else just being pretty good, I, I see what a future is. The question is, Wendell Carter, will he ever turn into... I, like I always said when he was in Chicago, he could be like Al Horford, a couple of time all-star, and then just a quality, quality, really high-level starter in the league for a long time. And if his career could be Al Horford, a lot of people are really, really happy. Al Horford, one of those dudes that do a little bit of everything. He's really good at a lot of different things. Even this year, he shot 44% from three and aged like 37. I can see Wendell Carter being extremely underrated because I believe that a lot of people have not watched Wendell Carter. He has been on tanking teams when he was here in Chicago. Then he went to Orlando and he was the package piece or the main attraction and a trade where the team he went to was selling. <laughs> so it hasn't been like high intensity, high stakes basketball for Wendell Carter yet in his career. And I feel like once he gets to that moment, whether it be a playing game or a playoff series, people realize, oh no, Wendell Carter is actually really, really nice. And he's a really, really smart defender. I'm really high on Devin Vassell. I try to come into these videos and be as honest as possible. De Devin Vassell slash the San Antonio Spurs, are, they're not a team I've watched a ton over the last season. Um, even though I felt like I was always watching when they was doing some special kind of night where they had uh, ex-NBA players from their organization be on the call with the normal announcers, and I really like that. Also, plug alert, there is uh, also a docu-series here on YouTube from the official San Antonio Spurs YouTube account that goes through the entire history, and I binge-watched all of that in one day. It's, it's great, by the way, so go check it out. All that being said, I have not watched a ton of Devin Vassell to even have like a real, real opinion of him. This is the season where I dive in because I'm undoubtedly watching because Wimpy is there, and I feel the same way about, about Malachi Branham and so on and so forth. So I, I can't have an opinion on this one just yet. This is the guy I mentioned, Jaden McDaniels. Dude's really a good defender. Uh, I think he deserved to be all defensive this season, but he wasn't. It seems like he's on the Nasri path of development where he increases his handles and other offensive aspects each offseason. Jaden McDaniels falls into one of my favorite archetypes of players. They're like, man, he got that one side of the ball down pack. Now watch he starts to add a little bit here and a little bit here and a little bit here, and then boom, uh, he's great. I mean, great, r relatively, relatively great. I don't know if he's ever going to be an all-star, but I'm not going to cap the man's potential by myself. And I think I started to really like that archetype because of Jimmy Butler watching him in Chicago. Where, like, when he was drafted, even though he played almost no minutes per game, you saw how much he cared defensively. He was like, man, if he can ever put the ball on the floor, then you learn how to do that. If he can ever make a jump shot, then you learn how to do that. Uh, as long as it's with any arc, even to this day. And he just turned into something that nobody expected him to be at the 30th overall pick. That's why I really like the archetype of player. Now, it doesn't come around that often because I'm be honest with you, the guy that I thought was going to do something to him, not to be Jimmy Butler, but I mean, like, he got that one side of the ball. And if he could become average offensively, he's going to be super quality player. It was Matisse Stiebel. When T-Stiebel came to the league, if you remember my draft, I'm like, man, so, oh, they just got a steal right there. And he made off defensive teams, but he never was able to put the uh, the offensive side together, at least yet. I'm not counting them out either. This guy makes a good point, though. I think Jaden is pretty well appreciated by uh, media and serious NBA hits. I feel like, yeah, if you've been watching any Minnesota Timberwolves over the last season, you're aware of Jaden McDaniels. It's just a matter of getting people to watch. They made the playoffs last season. He broke his hand because he, he punched the wall. So, <laughs> like, as far as the general public go, they may not know much about Jaden, but the diehard NBA fans, the serious NBA heads, definitely know. Quentin Grimes and Trey Murphy are really, really good picks. And actually, I might take back... Sorry, Jaden. I might take back my Jaden McDaniels to, to give the Trey Murphy one. I might have to. This is what I said earlier about the Orlando Magic. They have a couple different people. Mark Hill has been bouncing back strong. Um, but Mark Hale, at this point, and, and though I don't mean on the national stage, like the athletic polls and stuff, I feel like NBA fans have been saying that Mark Hale has been over underrated um, in, for a few years now. And he's been good, do not get me wrong. You definitely saw the difference between when he didn't play versus when he did play last season, how bad the Orlando Magic looked in the first part of the season when he was injured, and then he came back like, oh, snap, this is like a real NBA team. His impact is there, but I fall victim to it as well. I feel like every year over the last couple of years, when we do our preseason most improved player candidates, I always have Mark Hill there because I'm, I'm hoping that that first overall pick version of him is still in there. And every single year, he shows you that. Like, even if he's not first overall pick, he's going to be a damn good NBA player. But, like, I still, like, oh, he going to take that jump. He going to take that jump. This might be my last year of expecting Mark Hill to take the jump because, honestly, he doesn't necessarily need to for the Atlanta Magic. Now, it does, it does help a ton if he does take that jump. But between Paolo and Franz, those two dudes look like studs. You maybe not need Mark Hill Fultz to be an all-star caliber player to be really good. I've been seeing a lot of Chris Stapps for Zingas, and I think that um, with him playing on a contending team, a lot of people are going to realize how good he is. It's just a matter of can he get healthy. 
Uh, Aaron Gordon falls into this, but the fact that Aaron Gordon just did what he did on the NBA uh, final scale, I'm going to say he's no longer underrated because everybody saw what he did. You know what I'm saying? But, I mean, I guess he could still be. Those are just a few. Um, but as you notice, there, has, there wasn't a ton of already all-star level players that were mentioned. And I, I think that you could potentially still be an all-star and still be underrated, you know? Uh, but, I mean, let me know in the comment section. Who's the most underrated player in ball? And we'll be back soon. Peace. Hit, hit the link. Hit the link. Get, go ahead. Get, get you a hat, man. Don't miss out. Get you a hat.